in this cool. That's the Sonoma, I don't know if you can see how well you can see it, but that's the Sonoma mastering system. I don't know what Gus is working on here. It's like, anyway, whatever that is, um, pretty cool stuff. This is the, the home of Octave Records. Gus is out and away recording one of my favorite artists, Don Grusin brother of Dave Grusin and uh, two of the finest piano players out there. Ooh, can't wait to hear what he, he comes back with. Anyway, so the question for today is how do you select the best subwoofer for audio? And it comes to us from Thank, okay, in Vancouver, British Columbia. He writes, hey Paul, I'm in the market for a good subwoofer to go with my Focal floor standing speakers. I searched many well-regarded names, but almost all of them are marked as best bass for movies. Now, I want something that gives the best performance for music. If I get a subwoofer made for movies, will it give me the bass good enough for music as well? You know, that's an excellent question, sir. It's great because it's true. Almost every subwoofer out there is gonna tout its wonderfulness for movies. And why is that? Because that's the market. That's what subwoofers are built for, is home theaters. That's, that's where, I don't know, I, I'm gonna pull up you know, a number out of my took us 80%. Let's call it 80% of subwoofers, maybe 90% of subwoofers are sold to home theater users because, you know, we want to have that bottom end. And as much as I, you know, am an evangelist, as you know, for subwoofers, um, and we're just installing a new subwoofer up here, uh, a REL, one, my, one of my favorite brands is REL. And there are a number of great brands out there. It, going to be marked, even RELs, I think they're, I just bought a, what's it, a 1508, and guess what its uh, nomenclature is, HT1508. Well, that, I hate to tell you, stands for home theater, right, because that's where the market is. Now, having said that, I don't think I know of a subwoofer worth its salt that is designed specifically for movies, because it's the same thing. It's the same frequencies. In fact, the only difference between something that is specific for theaters might be what they call an LFE channel, a low frequency extension channel, which usually is mono, comes out of your surround sound processor, and a number of subs probably have an LFE input, which is just a way to sum, uh, and your, your device does it anyway, um, but otherwise, you're going to have a left and a right, and, and if it's any good, you'll have a high-level input. They are identical. So I use RELs in my home theater, and I use RELs uh, on, a, a, on a few systems. When, when I used to, of course, now I have the Infinity IRS-5s <laughs> with their own built-in subwoofers. But uh, previous to that, it was either Martin Logan's or RELs were part of my system, and both of those were pushed and promoted as home theater devices, but in reality, they work just as well for music. So, bottom line, ignore the home theater designator and just realize that's where the market is, that's why it's labeled at, and you will do great to install a home theater marked home theater, uh, to install a subwoofer marked home theater in a music situation. So, if you get a chance, drop me a video or a note and let me know how all that worked. It would be much appreciated. Okay, we'll uh, go back to... All right, talk to you tomorrow. Bye.